Chris has arrived. We've um, we've got new codes on the doors, which I might get to. It, t- it, t- it connects with one of my plays. Well, don't tell them the codes. No, we're not going to tell them the codes. <laughs> and the codes will never be revealed. The codes... No, not to <laughs> the DJs who present. They are the last people to know the codes. Yeah. They've got to get into this building. Yeah. No, I'm going to try and talk about my plays now. Because I think this, this Fringe Theatre Festival has, has started and we've done what we can to promote it. And it's time time to mention my, my various plays. My producer, Mr JD, <laughs> has said that only one of them is viable <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Which is the... Have I, got, have I got this right? You think the Worried About Jim one is quite easy to do? Yes, that's dead easy, yes. I think we can go for that and get a BAFTA for it. OK. <laughs> Because we are, we are a bit worried. Yeah, we are. Yeah, just a no job for JD. <laughs> oh today. yes, look, yeah, well, this is it. Look, <laughs> yes, I, I shall hang on to my aim of getting my <laughs> plays better developed, but there are many other things that we have to do. So Chris has just presented to our producer with the with the headphone cable, which is <laughs> a terrible. He... It's a terrible mess and muddle at the moment. <laughs> no, it's completely straight. So JD can get sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Chris, is, um, Chris, Chris he do you want, doesn't get do you want sacked to go at this stage of the show. Do you want to no, go outside I, the door? I can <laughs> sack him before I started today. Well, I think you should, you should just let him... Oh, dear. I should, new, I should, new, new, new listeners, I have to do the first yeah. part of the show while, while Chris is sorted out. <laughs> but this week I may go on forever because he's upset the producer. <laughs> yes. And, and, and the show proper will never, will never stop. The producer's so now going to have a cup of coffee and a pork, uh, a nice big cake. So, you know, uh, you want me to do this? I'm sacked. But <laughs> he's giving me things well, anyway, and I'm sacked. While, while they're going well, on, you're I, not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, my play DJ Buttons, that, that's waiting on the, the playwrights for hire. The playwrights for hire, I'm not sure if they've been spotted in Exeter, but they're arriving soon. And they're going to sort that one out. I've got my pound ready. <laughs> You're going to so, invest in a pound? Yep. I wow! Might, I might invest a pound in each of my plays. <laughs> but you, th- you think being worried about Jim is so simple... <laughs> that we could get away with that one. We could do that ourselves, possibly. Uh, well, sorry to interrupt. Yes. This is JD's only fan. <laughs> oh. oh, 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 oh. Your, your one's dead <laughs> in the corner. Is it? It no, doesn't work. No, <laughs> just leave all the fans out of the way. But look, the other one is having a wonderful time. I'm going to play my jingle. No. Can we talk about worried about Jim? <laughs> oh, all right. If that's the one we're working on, yes. So round about on this show, round about quarter to twelve, twenty to twelve, I shall say I'm very worried about Jim, and then you, the both of you, join in somehow, saying, "Don't worry about Jim. Why should you worry?" Or, "Yes, I'm worried as well, for some reason." That's but that's basically the script. So well, far. he seems to disappear. <laughs> yes, that's what I think. I think he's disappeared. He's hiding. He's yeah. gone, hasn't he? Do you think he's on holiday? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the electric tortoise has let him have time off. Oh. The good behaviour. That's a possibility, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, he might. He might just have escaped completely. Because yeah. there was a rumour that he's fed up with Facebook, that he's not appearing on Facebook yeah. anymore. But there are people tagging him, I notice. Are there? there would, are pe- would that be our producer? Oh, no, I don't think it was... The, well, I don't know unless he's part of this scheme. There's some people working out on a, mu- a, 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 a musical, and they claim he's contributed to this musical. Oh. But does he know about it? Don't know. Is it the musical that's also the palais worried about Jim? No, completely different projects. Oh. This musical looks a bit dodgy to me. I think we should keep our worried about Jim play quite separate. Okay. I don't even know that Jim is really part of it. I think he's just being tagged in it 
while he's on holiday or whatever's happened to him <laughs> not part of Facebook anyway which is the nearest thing to disappearing isn't it <laughs> but anyway we'll, st- we'll look, should we regard that as a rehearsal and um, we'll do the, the this week's edition of I'm Very Worried About Jim okay about 20 to 12 okay and we'll see what happens it could be a r- ongoing soap opera worried about Jim in fact we just made a new thing on TV worried about Jim it could run for years and years yeah Chris. I know and you'll be loaded uh, it was my idea, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm very worried about Jim. Okay. Was originated by me. I'd like to but, say that because uh, I can see that Chris is taking over this idea. But our producer. You, be, you better watch him, mate, and your idea. Our producer <laughs> might do that. Well, he's, he's, he's there to protect our interests, Chris. Yeah. Well, I don't think you should suck him quite yet. He's probably. No, he's been really. I'm, I'm, just, wait, I'm just going to email the boss. On, and and say watch out, Chris is on a, on a war path. Oh right, that's okay. <laughs> well, as long as you can protect all our interests, JT. Yeah, well in that's this, what in this this. So it's a weekly. Well, at the moment it's only weekly, but we'll see who else on on Falling FM is worried about Jim because I I think a lot of people may be. Yeah. So it might be more than once a week. And uh, it, the idea started here. That's the important thing. If you can make that quite clear to the relevant authorities on our behalf. Okay. But anyway, there's very little time now for me to talk about uh, having a wonderful time. I'm going to play my jingle. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> here, it, here, here it comes. We've walked all this way along the beach and we've passed nothing but hotel after hotel. Well, it is a resort, darling. I know, but look at them all. Dozens of them. And they're all crowded. A place like this is bound to be popular. Yeah. See? There's an airport coach pulling up to that one. Look at them all with their flight bags. Straight through the lobby and out to the poolside bar. Well, we must have looked like that a fortnight ago. (laughs) But seeing them from here, from the outside, as it were, it looks rather strange. Don't you think? How do you mean? Strange. Well, look at them. They're all mad to get some leisure. Is it It would be very easy to take advantage of a group of people in a state like that. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, shall we head back? The airport might call. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're, ju- we're, ju- we're just talking about something else, but on this, uh, the whole play is on the Internet Archive, having a wonderful time. Basically, people go off on holiday and they get into dramatics, amateur dramatics and all sorts of other leisure activities and they never come back. And my play is more of a situation based on the Phoenix basement as if it was a an island in the Mediterranean or some sort of holiday place, wherever you thought that play was, was based. But it's not like that really, is it, Chris? We're, we're doing productive work down here. Yeah. And we can escape. Yeah. We might not no, be able to get in. producer won't let us escape. Well, he might not. No, he's If you're a bad boy, I should lock the studio door. Well, <laughs> well that was getting in. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the little bit of sort of biz, stage business that I'm trying to work out is how the audience will be in the Phoenix bar somewhere and then they'll go down into the Phoenix basement for some relaxing, creative um, experiences, whatever we come up with. A tour of the print shop, the studio, the recording, the music, whatever it is we can conjure up. But they never return. So when is it the people who are sitting in the bar will begin to be concerned? That's the dramatic tension in it. Unconcerned right now. You are. You think you can feel the tension ra- yeah, rising in this situation. I can. <laughs> but what we have to do is to, is to work out how to get the people out of this cellar by some mysterious means, such as you came in, Chris. There's a trap 
<laughs> how I came in was I text JD. Yeah. And uh, because he didn't answer his phone. Right. Um, but I reckon we shall make a trap door in the ceiling. Yeah, well, that would be one way of doing it. I'm not. I I, I think people will have to sign a non-disclosure agreement, and then we will explain to them how they can escape. They may want to stay here, but we're not going to get. Depending on how many people would like to be part of having yeah, a wonderful Yeah, Cole, Cole said so I live under the desk. Well, yes, well, that's why it's broken. Yes, <laughs> well, you do spend quite a lot of time on Follow Heaven, don't you? I did, yes. But um, just for, pra- for practical reasons, if we have a play in which everybody visiting Exeter over the next ten days or so disappears into the basement of the Phoenix and is never seen again, but if we, we that- can do this as an illusion, but we've, we've got to have a way out as well, and a non-disclosure agreement as to how they escaped. A trap door. A tra- so we've got to have an additional trap door. I think we have a trap door into the ceiling. OK. And one into the floor. <laughs> and depending on how good they are... Yes. We can tell them about the one in the ceiling or just open the one in the floor. <laughs> OK. <laughs> so it depends how they behave. Yeah. It, and, it, and which part of the non-disclosure agreement they're prepared to sign? Um, no, I'm not making a non-disclosure agreement. You don't think that's a I good idea? Re- I reckon. Because look, Chris, the thing is, the thing we want to avoid is them going round back to the front door and telling all the people sitting in the bar <laughs> they haven't really escaped into this endless capacity that is then, the Phoenix basement then we don't need a trap door in the ceiling we just want one in the floor Okay. and they're having a lovely time <laughs> of course they are and the producer opens the trap door in the floor <laughs> Right. and eventually that, that area will get full uh, well let's know Okay, well, look, we'll have to continue this conversation.